Hi again. Today I'm going to talk about where we can find sources of locally grown, locally wild cane so that we can make it into bassoon reeds. Basically, if you live um, in the southern United States, particularly in the western part, uh, or in northern Mexico, you're really in great luck because the cane grows wild very nicely in most of those regions. Uh, basically, you need to make sure that you're in a region where the cane grows for a couple of years because the first year's growth just isn't any good. Uh, it needs at least two years of growth uh, to be worthwhile. Uh, so uh, that means you can go uh, coastal regions of the, of the United States up to um, about the Oregon uh, border, California, Oregon border. Uh, things are pretty good as long as it doesn't hard freeze during the winter. Um, so what do I need to find cane? Well, basically I need to find a place where it grows. And in California, or where, near where I live, I live in, in the San Diego County, uh, there are lots and lots of places where it grows. Uh, basically, uh, a, a favored place is along a stream. I'll show you some pictures of some of those things along a stream. Uh, there are some places where there are uh, fields of it that was planted as, as um, windbreaks, and you'll usually find those out in, uh, out in farming regions uh, along irrigation ditches. And uh, you can do that along a stream. Uh, there even grows along the roadside in some places uh, and gullies. Uh, San Diego is, is built in hills and valleys and gullies, and so there are lots of those places. Um, and, and in some cases, just where you wouldn't expect it, along that, there's, there's a picture of, of an industrial park uh, that's along a stream uh, where it's one of my favorite growing places. Anyway, so what do I need? Once I've found those places, what do I need to do? Well, I don't need very much in the way of tools. What I do is I need some sort of uh, gauge to gauge the diameter. Uh, the, the diameter that, that we use for a bassoon cane is around one inch in diameter. I use, uh, this is a gauge that I just made by cutting some holes in a piece of plywood. I go from seven eighths of an inch diameter to an inch and an eighth, uh, uh, right? And basically, I tend to use things that are between 15 sixteenths and 1 sixteenth for bassoon, uh, sometimes up to uh, an inch and an eighth. Basically, I like the half round gauge because you can take it and you can put it, you can put your cane right into it and see what its diameter is. This one happens to be right about one inch and it's in its narrow part. Don't expect cane to be perfectly round. It tends to be oval. And you can see that it's about it's about an inch and a sixteenth uh, when it's in its fatter part. So those those things work fine. And so I need a gauge. I need something to cut it with. Uh, can we see this? We can see parts of it anyway. This is a fairly aggressive saw. I I, I like something that that cuts through quickly. Uh, and so you're going to cut. Uh, below a node on, on there so you don't need to worry about if it, if it rips the cane a little bit. Uh, it cuts through very quickly. Another saw that's very handy and you'll see me using it in a video a little bit later is a drywall saw. saw. Those are very short saws with a pointed end and again they're very aggressive and they cut very quickly. So basically all I need to do is go out and, and look at the cane. When I do look at the cane what I need to do is look for a cane that is at least in its second year of growth. Ah, and when do I need to go? I need to go in it during the dormant season of the cane. And that dormant season is usually in the middle of the winter, uh, close after the first freeze, if it does freeze where you live. Um, and um, some Legends say that cutting around the new moon is the best time. Um, I have not cut enough cane to tell if that's really uh, the case or not. Uh, but you need to go sometime during the dormant season. Okay, and you're going to look for cane that has gone to seed. Okay, that indicates that it's a little bit older. Or it has branches up near the top, so it, it'll branch out, and you're going to look for that. And basically you want to just hack it off down near, near the end and, and 
pull it out of the cane field. Um, as far as transporting it, after you've done that, uh, it depends on what your vehicle is like. For uh, several cutting seasons, I've cut the remainder of the cane off at, at a length that'll fit inside my car with the back seat down. Uh, that tends to be about 10, 12 feet. Uh, and so I'm looking for, I'll try to keep that amount. I don't need to cut a lot of cane. You have to realize that every stalk you cut, because it's, it's if it's 10 feet long and, and most of that diameter is useful, uh, then you're going to get something like 40 to 50 reeds out of that one stalk. So unless you're uh, commercially cutting cane, uh, for yourself, 40 or 50 things will last a year, year and a half, two years, uh, something like that as far as the number of reeds you might make yourself. Unless you are a professional who, who plays, uh, one of my teachers uh, very proudly showed me his, his drying board of reed blanks with 100 reeds in it. Um, and that was one season's worth of reeds for Principal Bassoon and the LA Philharmonic. That was uh, Frederick Moritz a long time ago. Anyway, uh, so you're going to do that. Um, you'll also see that, that if you decide to, to not to cut the cane or just to use the whole cane, it's about 20, 21 feet long. And so that can be a challenge to get it home in a normal car. And uh, I did that this year. I, someone told me that the cane might age better if, in fact, you uh, kept it all together with the ends all on there. So I try, I'm trying that this year, and we'll see what happens. Uh, that could be a challenge in the car, and here's a picture of what I did with my car. And yes, I drove about 25 miles on the freeway uh, with the cane outside the window, uh, seeing how things were. Anyway, once you've done that, you're going to take the cane, and you're going to take it in a stock and put it someplace uh, in, a, in a mild uh, region out of the sun. You'll keep it in there for uh, um, basically six months or so. Uh, here's a picture of, of what mine looks like. Uh, I have a rack in my garage and it full, goes fully from the back wall to the, uh, the wall by the garage door. Like I said, this cane is about 21 feet long. So um, anyway, you put it up there and you just let it set. So you've got it in some place that, that it's not going to freeze and it's not going to get real hot in there. And there's some air circulation in, as well. So um, try that, find a place where you can do that. Once you've done that, then you're going to have to, uh, when summer starts, uh, I typically do this in June uh, and, and when it went, so in June, I'll take the cane out of, of my storage and I will, uh, cut it to a length that works. Again, 20 feet is very long. And so, uh, I live in a condo. And so, uh, here's a picture of, of the cane outside, uh, my deck, trying to get it up onto the deck. And I also have a picture here of it on the deck and it's it's just too hard to it's too long to deal with so i cut it to a length of about 12 to 16 feet something like that and then my deck has has a kind of a rack over it and i put it out there into the sun and uh, my objective in putting it into the sun is to uh, let it sun and dry out and it will basically start changing from its greenish state oh you have to take off the leaves and, and some people wash it but um, so that's the state that it's in um, and you'll take it and you put it in the sun and turn it every day or two or three for about three or four weeks. At that time, it's, it should have pretty much turned to a golden color similar to what you're seeing here. And um, at that time, what I like to do is um, is to cut it into segments like this. Basically, you want to cut uh, about an inch or two from the nodes, the joint branches between the segments uh, on each end. And you'll get pieces of varying lengths. Uh, anyway, pieces of varying lengths. Okay, it's still not ready to use at that point. 
So what, what I do after that, after I've cut it into here, is I put it into a box. I put it into a box, I label the box when I cut the cane, and I put it in and again in dark storage with some air circulation in a place where it will not freeze and it will not get outrageously hot. Uh, for me, that's a closet. And so I'll, I'll do that and, and let it sit for at least another six months. So about the time you're ready to cut cane the next year, in January or so, um, your cane might be ready to use. Um, don't afraid, be afraid to store it for a long time. The cane in this uh, in this box is is eight to ten years old. Um, there are two batches here. I just combined them because they're all old, and I'm no longer keeping records on them. Uh, perfectly good for many many years, uh, and then it's at, at, at that time once you've aged it for at least a year. Uh, then it should be ready for um, for consumption and gouging and making into creeds. Hope you find this useful. Good luck. Happy cane chopping.